Back on the 2000 F-150, the one I put the uh, replacement intake manifold on earlier. Definitely have a blown head gasket or something worse. I mean, as you may remember, when I put it back together, I wasn't getting any water and oil or vice versa coolant. Um, but since then, my number four cylinder hydro locked, filled up full of coolant, and uh, it wouldn't turn over. So I just pulled the plugs out one at a time until I found the one that had the coolant in it, and then the engine would turn over. So, definitely have a blown head gasket or something worse. I guess the gallons of stop leak they poured into it had just temporarily stopped that leak. So, I'm in the process of tearing it back down and we'll go further into it this time and check out those heads and hopefully see some damage on that head gasket. It's always nice to see that and then you're not guessing. So. I'll uh, bring you back when I have some more progress to show you. These are where the transmission lines hook in for the cooler. That's the bottom one. And of course the bottom one was spinning in the radiator. So, this big ugly overflow bottle had to come out the corner here to get access to that bottom line and of course the top one was no problem day number two on disassembling the 5.4 and the 2000 F250 so got most of the accessory stripped down just about getting ready to do the valve covers and from everything I've seen and read this uh, Passenger side one is a, a fun challenge. A little tight back there. This truck had a short S belt on it because they had the AC compressor bypassed. Now I got a better look at it. I can see why. This whole clutch is just roasted. All three dampeners are gone. And when you spin it, the pulley doesn't even spin straight. In fact, it almost feels like the clutch itself might be what's holding that pulley on. It's not separating right there. Unless it gauges inside, but should be right there. All right, I'll keep you posted. Got that right side valve cover off. It really wasn't all that bad. It wasn't pleasant, but not as bad as I had feared after everything I'd heard about it. So, the really the biggest obstacles are the wiring looms. I disconnected the starter relay pulled that metal bracket off the firewall here which allowed me to unbolt the main harness and just drape it off to the side here and that opened up a lot of room in the back and getting to the bottom bolts is a little difficult but it's not horrible uh, eight millimeter bolts all the way around and interestingly enough you do not remove the bolts the way these are designed they're captured in the valve cover, so you just loosen them, they stay put. So, now, number two. Got number two off. In some ways it was worse than the first one. Trying to get this EGR pipe off, or at least out of the way enough to get the cover off. It's not easy to get to the bottom part of that, and of course it's rusted at the bottom end. And then the bracket that holds up the power steering reservoir is on the bottom side, back of the head, and that was kind of corroded in there. 
Anyway, obviously it's off now, so both valve covers are off. Next step will be to pull the harmonic balancer, drop the power steering pump, and get that timing cover off. So check this out guys. Okay, well, on day three here, I just pulled the timing cover off. It's right down here actually. I still have to pull the lead of the crankshaft sensor off of it. Anyway, so here's the setup. This is a, the tensioner and this is a little hydraulic ram that puts tension on that when the truck's running. So that's why right now You'll see there's slack in it, but that's not a big deal. Even when I get the new one on, there'll be slack on it until I set the new uh, slack adjuster. Ow! And I just now noticed this chunk of guide is broken off too. But what's more interesting, okay, that's what's left of the tensioner for this side. So it's amazing this thing actually quieted down at all once it got running. So I'm finding some pieces to it here and there. And I'll probably have to fish around in the oil pan a little bit after I drain it, see if I can find anything in there. Yeah, that actually still looks like oil. I thought that's pretty fascinating. That thing just blew apart. Now the replacements are better because like I, I said, when these things get hydraulic pressure it pushes on that pin and it takes the slack out of the chain. But this is actually an upgraded uh, according to Ford version because the early version for the 5.4 was cast iron and it was mechanical so it did not rely on hydraulic pressure to keep tension on it but this plastic piece of junk they're known to blow out the seal on the back where the oil comes in to pressurize it and so that's when you get that rattly noise when it first starts up until it builds up pressure again and so, but when you buy a new timing kit, it comes with the cast iron ones because they're obviously the better ones. So I can replace this and upgrade it back to the better version, which I already have that kit, so I'm set there. And here's another piece of it. I'm finding floating around in here from that guide so it's no wonder this thing was a chatterbox when I first opened it up or first started it up I guess it's something that it quieted down at all so before you can pull the chains off you have to put the timing marks in a specific area and what it boils down to is the right side cam timing mark has to show about 11 o'clock and the right side cam the mark will be at 12 o'clock then you have to lock the cams in place because apparently there's enough spring pressure in here to where the cam could spin over and push a valve down on a piston in a cylinder where the piston is up and cause some engine damage. So there's a tool
right here that just clamps around part of the cam there and locks it into the head so it can't move. I've got this side installed already so that's what it looks like installed. If you're really in a pinch, I've heard people can use a pair of vice grips to lock that in, but the thought of using vice grips on a camshaft really makes me cringe. I wouldn't do it, but for what it's worth, the tools aren't that expensive. What sucks is you have to buy two of them. I will link uh, to where I bought them at. It was the best price I could find. I'll put that in the description, as well as a a link to Ford Tech Make You Loco and he has a really excellent video on doing a full timing uh, set on one of these exact same engines so if you really want more detail than what I'm showing you here uh, he'll be the guy to go to for that okay I got both of the tools in place and I repositioned this one I had it on the next space up but then I saw there was a boss midway for the tool ears to rest on, so it's obviously made for that tool, so I moved it back. So they're both centered now. So now we're ready to pull the chains off. That's the lower guide. The lower guide actually still looks pretty good. It's not broken and it's not worn through where it rides. But the upper guide, like we noticed, it's gone. Looks like that one uses an Allen head. So now the chain just lifts off. These uh, tensioners are side specific. They'll, <laughs> they'll, uh, well, they're supposed to have them left and right on them. That one doesn't have anything on it. Look at this. The right side had the left one. So either somebody at Ford had a bad day when they assembled this thing, or it's been open before. I haven't seen any signs that it's been open. There's an L, and then there's nothing on this one. I wonder if that might have something to do with uh, why that tensioner just blew itself to pieces. Or I should say the guide. Because that guide... You see, that looks pretty good. I bet somebody has been in here because that doesn't look like 200,000 miles. Usually that that layer of plastic there's worn through at 200,000. I bet somebody did this and they did it wrong. Mm. 
So, this guide broke off here, but that's basically what the other side is supposed to look like. So that's the fixed guide, and then the one opposite is the one on the tensioner, so that guide pivots. But in both cases, the fixed guide was broken. This one had one piece broken off of it, and this one's just shattered in pieces. So yeah, I bet somebody just did a sloppy job on this. Timing set comes with a new gear for the crank and uh, not for the uh, camshaft. They're actually integral to the camshaft. You don't replace those. Okay, I'm going to clean up now. It looks like tomorrow I should be ready to pull yeah, maybe both heads, depending on how quickly it goes, but I'll at least pull this side off so I can do some inspection back there and hopefully find a damaged head gasket, not a damaged head or block. I took off the, hut, the clutch hub on the uh, AC compressor. They must have had the air conditioning on the whole 200,000 miles this truck was run. Because not only are those dampeners all gone, look at the holes. Totally oblonged. It hasn't had amp dampeners in a very long time. And there's no bearing down there anymore. Now it was a coastal town, so I'd assume that they actually had the uh, defrost on all the time. You wouldn't need the AC over there that often. But <laughs> they seriously wore this out. So thanks for watching so far. I'll keep you guys posted.